seen these and I think some already have but there are handouts if, if you're sitting in one of these seats make sure everybody on your table has one there's also some pens in case somebody needs a pen
We have classes at Palm Beach Lakes. If you, if, well, look, there are two or three reasons. One is to deepen the faith of all of the students in the abiding truth and the relevance of God's Word. Why do we have it? Deepen faith. I think we all sometimes pray that prayer that disciple pray, Lord, I believe, have my own belief. I want to have greater faith. There's not a person that likely sits in any class you'll ever teach in this church that has a long to have deep. You've got it right now. And since I look at the very interest that you have and the seriousness with which we're taking these matters, we want to deepen our faith. And, and, and that's, that's the design of it. When we start talking about what we're, going to, you know, what we're going to teach in our class and everything, it is to deepen the faith in everybody in the, in the reliability and the relevance of God's Word. It's from God. But it is as relevant today as it was in the first century. Mankind hasn't changed. The needs of mankind. Young people haven't changed. The faith that was needed by a 15-year-old kid in the first century is the same faith that is needed by a 15-year-old in the, in the 21st century. And the same thing of those who are 75. There's a second reason that we have that. That is to draw everyone into a deeper relationship with God. It's not there for just a minute. A relationship with God. Studying about God is not intellectual. It, it involves our intellect. But the evidence for the inspiration of the Bible, the evidence for the existence of God, that's not an intellectual kind of thing. It's the kind of thing that is to develop a relationship with God. And especially those of you who teach our younger, younger people, you need to recognize what you have experienced, and that is developing your own faith. Go down to the six-year-old class down the hallway, you believe in God. Yeah, I believe in God. Mama and Daddy told me that. And they believe in it. They believe in God. And sometimes I think about myself. I, I, I don't have any re remembrance in my life at all, like some of you, of not believing in God. I believe in God all my life. But for the long part of my life, I believe in God for the same reason I believe in the Son of God. And that's what it's all about. And so when we think about why we have a we're trying to develop relationships with God. And, and, and we're trying to equip all of the students, every one of them, with the knowledge and the skills they need to have for Christian living. That's why we're doing it. We want to equip them. That's what Ephesians 4, for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. So when we walk the Bible, why am I here? Here's my purpose. I want to, to make them have a respect for the Bible, have an understanding of the, revel, the relevance of the Bible to their life. I want them to have a personal relationship. And I want those children who walk out of this class, you know, I teach them for you know, 10 weeks or however long that period is, I want them to walk out of that class with an understanding that I'm now equipped better to serve them. there is that other aspect of that. And that is to fulfill the responsibility. And here's a quotation of Colossians chapter 1 verse 28. And those of you who were in that men's class, that Sunday after men's class, whatever, the elders met with some 80 men in this church and said, here's what we're trying to do in, in this. It's the very words of this. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ. The word per perfect doesn't mean sinless, but it means fully equipped. That's what it's all about. Whether we're talking about, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, somebody in the sixth grade or something, 12, 13 years of age, you can be a perfect 12-year-old Christian. 
knowledge will be different when you're 15 or 20. But the whole concept is everybody grows at their own rate and, and they stay perfect. Here's a child that is physically handicapped and, and he learns to walk. And he's perfect for a person that's physically handicapped. And they're babes in Christ who are just like that. Now then, here, here's the next question. That is, why do we have teacher training classes here at Palm Beach Lakes? What's this class all about? Well, there are two or three reasons that are involved in that. That is to ensure that all teachers and potential teachers do understand the overall purpose and the direction of the Bible classes at Palm Beach Lakes. I've been 35 years in this church. When I arrived at this church, there was, a, there was a concept of Bible classes, and you've been a part of it. Most of you have been a part of it for 15, 20 years or more. And, and that is to, to, to help an individual to have an understanding of what we're trying to do in our classes. And though you may already know this thing, Peter says, I want to remind you of some things. And so we'd all be on the same page and all stay focused. And that is that we have an understanding of that. And then to provide training in the study of the Bible text or topics. We'll talk about different kinds of classes. How do you take a text and teach a class? How do you take a topic, marriage, or anything? How do you develop that lesson? And then, then uh, how do you take uh, maybe a Bible character? Just, and not just tell the story, but develop a lot lesson around, around that. Because a lot of times, and in the smaller classes down the hallway, that's exactly what they're doing. It's Daniel in the lion's den, it's David and Goliath, and it is telling that Bible story and then making the application, uh, application to that end. So we want to, to, to help us to be trained to know how to study the Bible text and topic. We, we want to provide training so that we understand how to prepare a lesson. The preparation of the lesson. I've been asked to teach the junior high class or the senior high class on first and second Timothy. How do I make preparation for it? And it's the preparation of a lesson on a Bible text or topics. And uh, fortunately in the plan that we have for this, for teaching classes here, a lot of times we'll provide a lot of material for you. But if, but if you don't have it, have it. And this will help all of us who are here so much. And then having studied the text on our own and then having learned how to get the text ready to take it into the class or the Bible topic, take it into the class, how do we make application of it? That's why at the end of this class, if we can get to where we want to be, it will help us to think about, I'm going to change the lives, not just of, we keep talking about the young people, but those of you men who will be involved in the teaching of men's classes, or men and women's classes, in the adult program, the very same thing. I've been asked to teach this topic where did that go? Well, as we've said, we provide a lot of material for you, but it doesn't need to be. Well, this is what uh, Wendell Winkler teaches about this. No, I've studied Wendell Winkler, and I'm not even going to stand up talking. I may not even mention his name, but I'm going to get him to show what God says about this. And, and it's so important to do that. And finally, we need to understand that the purpose of the teacher training class at Palm Beach Lane is to equip and develop teachers who are ready to step in and teach Bible classes in Palm Beach Lakes. One of the reasons we're having this class is because, step back and look at Palm Beach Lakes. We're not where we ought to be. We're out of balance. And the elders in their wisdom have said, we're going to, we're going to correct that. And when, uh, was it three, 
three months ago the elders had a meeting with all of those men and they challenged you to step to the plate and to reach the potential and we're going to provide opportunities for you to, to, to reach that potential. It's not just some dream that was had. That's reality and that's what this is all about. It's the elders and the, and the Lord himself through the spirituality of our elders challenging everyone years you've been teaching. Can you make any improvements? That's what this is all about. You see, here's somebody that's been teaching three years, and here's that person that's been teaching 23 years, and if he's still about the same level at 23 years of teaching that he was at three years of teaching. That's wrong. So we are fully intent on doing better and serving the Lord. David's going to come and talk about something principles involved in the direction of the way of this class. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you for being in this class. And uh, I hope that this is going to be helpful and beneficial for all of us. That the design of the design especially of tonight uh, is to uh, to try to get everybody on the same page when it comes to what, what's involved in teaching at Palm Beach Lake? My, my guess is that if you are involved in teaching uh, one of our classes, and I don't know that everybody here teaches a class here, uh, but my guess is if you are involved in our teaching program at all, it probably started something like this. Hi, we need you to teach next quarter. We need you to teach this class on this topic. Here's the book. Thank you. Good luck. Uh, and. Uh, uh, and didn't give you a whole lot of chance to say no, hopefully. Although some of you have said no and we didn't hear you uh, when you said it. Uh, but it, sometimes that's the way it's gone. Is uh, At least, uh, I'll say, uh, for the last lots of years, there hasn't been a class like this. It has just been, oh, well, we think you're... We think you're ready, or sucker enough, or whatever, okay? Uh, you know, we, we, we need you to teach. Here's what we need you to teach. This class, here's a book. Let us know if you have any questions. And, okay, so now we've got different men teaching and different women, te women teaching here and there, and okay. Are we all on the same page? I'm not talking doctrinally. I'm just talking teaching-wise. Are, 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 do, do we have an understanding of what it is to teach, and not just what it is to teach, but what we're trying to talk about in this class is what it is to teach at Palm Beach Lakes. Uh, that may be different than what it is to teach at another congregation. And so what, what, what we're going to talk about for the rest of tonight is just some, some fundamental principles. One of the words that we used to talk about this was just some philosophies of teaching at this congregation. These may not, these may be philosophies at other congregations, may not be necessarily. You may think these are as obvious as can be, and they are, uh, but shame on us if we don't try to make sure that we all understand when we step into a classroom at Palm Beach Lakes, here's what the elders expect. Here, here, here is what they are looking uh, and expecting from us as teachers when we walk uh, into those classes and and I realize tonight there's, there's many of us that are on uh, different levels, uh, many of us that uh, uh, have different teaching experience. Uh, some have taught classes here, some haven't taught classes here. Uh, some have taught uh, youth classes but haven't taught adult classes or vice versa, or some have taught both. Uh, some are new and haven't maybe had an opportunity to teach. Some are like Bill Jr. and have been teaching forever. Uh, you know, but so we're all on different levels, different experiences, uh, different pages perhaps. So that's the, that's the intent of this, is just to make sure, okay, here, here is at least in a general way the expectation. Here, here's, here, here's what needs to happen when we walk into a classroom. Number one, and you may think this is silly, but the number one expectation and philosophy of teaching at Palm Beach Lakes is that when you walk into that class, your job is to teach. You think, okay. Uh, thanks for the kindergarten lesson. Um, but seriously, the, the job is to teach. Here's, here, and, and this is, uh, let, let me give you some, some ideas that some people, not necessarily in this congregation, but in other places have had 
uh, when it comes to teaching. Some people's approach to teaching has been to walk into a class, uh, and again, I don't have anybody here in mind, this is other places, uh, they walk into a class and they've got a list of questions that they're going to ask in the class. So they just walk into class that day and they've got their list of questions and so they, they just ask the first question. What do you all think about this question? Uh -huh. Okay, and they just go around. All right, yeah, okay, that's good. Those, those are good things. Okay, well, that's interesting. All right, anybody, anybody got anything else? All right, let me ask you the next question. And they come in with a series of questions and kind of everybody has their say on the matter of the question. And sometimes in those classes, there's not really an the answer given. There's just, everybody kind of has some input into the class. Now, that's not to say it's wrong to ask questions in Bible class, understand. That's not to say it's wrong to have a, quest, a list of questions you're going to ask in Bible class. You need to have a list of questions to, to get involved in the class. But when we walk into a class, our job is to teach. Not, not, to, not, not to be the, uh, the manager or the, the referee of the questions uh, and the answers. Uh, so, so, some, some philosophies are uh, to, to manage a discussion. Walk in and, and we're, we're just going to have a discussion. And, and, and discussions are great in a class. But there needs to be a person in that class who is the teacher. And who makes sure that he has a lesson plan that has been developed. And that lesson, that Bible lesson is going to be taught. We need to have discussions in our classes. That's hard to do in the auditorium. That's one of the worst places to try to have discussion uh, because people can't hear other people having discussion. Uh, or some people just end up having their own discussions in different parts of the building while the teacher is teaching. So, I mean, it's great for private discussions, but horrible for corporate discussion. Uh, but we need to have discussions. But sometimes that's the only intent that some teachers have. So, some teachers, their, their philosophy when they come into class is uh, they treat it like a class is a reading exercise. They come in with a list of Bible verses, maybe they're written out on cards and they just pass out cards or they write them on the board and, okay, everybody get a verse. Everybody got a verse? Okay. Uh, Gary, read your verse. Yeah, that's a good verse. Anybody have any thoughts about that verse? Gary, what do you think about that verse? Yeah, that's great. Okay, Jeff, read your verse. All right, oh, that's a great verse. What do you think about that, Jeff? Yeah, okay. All right, good. Dan, read your verse. And so it's, is there anything wrong with reading Bible verses in the Bible class? No. But there needs to be some design and purpose behind what are we do. Now, nothing wrong with passing out Bible verses for people to read in class. None of this is to say those things are wrong. But our job as teachers is to teach. We are to spend time preparing a lesson and walk into that room ready to teach. What happens sometimes, and I've known of teachers who have allowed the question and answers or the, or the uh, discussion uh, to, to allow all sorts of things to be said but for the truth to not be laid out plain as day for somebody to walk away with. And potentially in some places a visitor could walk out of a class and not really, not really be sure what he was supposed to learn or where he was supposed to find the exact truth on something because they heard so much haven't had it nailed down for them. That's a teacher's job. A uh, teacher's job is to nail it down. That's what's involved in teaching. Now, what are we teaching? Uh, again, duh. <laughs> at, at Palm Beach Lakes, that's, uh, that's pretty obvious. We're teaching the Bible. Um, but again, that's, that's not always the case uh, in some places. You know, our, our job is not to come up with a bunch of a bunch of great stories. Uh, our job is not to uh, review the latest Reader's Digest uh, and uh, find all the great uh, anecdotes and uh, jokes out of the latest Reader's Digest. Do you know that there was a congregation? That there was a congregation that what they did for Bible class um, was that they, in a particular class, I don't know if it was their, uh, I don't know what age group it was, but for a particular class, they would get to class that morning. They would watch an episode of Andy Griffith. All right? They're, they're, they're about 23 minutes long, by the way. All right? Uh, if you watch them on Netflix without the commercial. So you get about 23 minutes of an Andy Griffith show episode. And then for the rest of the class, 
they would make life application from what did we what did we learn from this Andy Griffith uh, Andy Griffith episode. Now, there's some great life lessons from Andy Griffith, all right? You know, and, and, and there's some things that, that we could take home. Now, there's some things that, that maybe you learned from that that you don't want to do, but is that what we're, is that what we're there to do? It, is to pop in whatever it is and, and have a, a life application from, from Andy and Barney and, uh, and little Opie. Um, but that was, in, in, in one congregation, that was the idea of what made a good Bible class. Problem was, that was not a Bible class. Um, that, that, was, that was a class taking place. So uh, at, at Palm Beach Lakes, what are we trying to do? We're trying to have Bible class. And if you don't get anything else tonight, these next four things, what are Bible classes at Palm Beach Lakes designed to be? Four qualities about these classes. Number one, they are designed to be biblically centered. They, they, they are not centered on, on some um, uh, cultural thing necessarily that's happening, even if it's a cultural study, even if you're studying abortion, or even if you're studying homosexuality, or if you're studying something that's happening in the culture. It's not culturally, it's biblically centered. That's where we need to, that's where we need to put our, our, our peg down. We're studying what does the Bible say. And so all of our lessons uh, are, are going to be based and centered biblically. And, and when we study these and when, and when we come in and teach them, they're not only going to be a biblical, you can have a biblically centered class that is not biblically saturated. You, you can have, hey, let, let, let's, let's talk about this Bible topic. Uh, and and let, let's talk about music in worship. That's a biblically centered topic. You can talk about that and never go to the Bible. You can talk about that in a Q&A or a discussion or a round table or you know, whatever and never go to the Bible. Our Bible classes need to be <coughs> biblically saturated. We're, we're, not, we're not trying to teach uh, what the teacher thinks. We're not trying to teach uh, what, uh, what some book. We are trying to, what does the Bible say? Now, when they're biblically centered and when we saturate them with the Bible, we need to make sure that they're biblically accurate. We're not just walking in to teach any old thing about the Bible. We want to make sure that what we're teaching uh, is the, the pure doctrine of Christ. Um, and when you think about as you're preparing uh, your lesson, uh, as you're preparing your class, uh, most of the time for classes at this, at this church, as Dan said, you, you, we do give you materials to use. Some of you may, some of you have had occasions where you haven't been given materials. To use. And we said, Here, we, we need a class on this. Uh, and you may have been asked to come up with it on your own. That doesn't happen very often. Uh, usually there's something, some guidebook, some workbook that you're, uh, uh, and mo most of the time, multiple workbooks that you have to, uh, to use to prepare from. But, uh, but you know, even some of those, even some of those books, they're written by men. You know, they, they may be written by some, some very good men, very conservative, scholarly, faithful men, but they're still written by men. You need to make sure that what they're what they've written in, uh, in those books is is biblically accurate. And then uh, and we'll mention this again uh, as we get near the end of this. But uh, you need to make sure that not only are our classes biblically centered and saturated and accurate, but that they are biblically applicable. Uh, that what people are learning from the Bible. They can take and apply. And so here, that's the filter. Uh, that's our evaluation process. A as we're studying, as we're preparing, as we are teaching, that's kind of, we, we need to make sure our, our lessons are, are going to follow through uh, with those things. And if you go through your lesson plan, and you, boy, I, I only have one verse in, for this class today. You don't have enough verses. And I don't even know what the topic is. Uh, but, but if you've only got one verse or two verses to look at, uh, unless you're doing an in-depth ex exegetical study of some passage and you're going to dig into the, to the Greek and the tenses and all of that, uh, one verse is not usually enough. Um, and so we're, we're there uh, to teach the Bible. We're not there to dress up the Bible. Uh, we're not there to try to make it look good. It looks good on its own. Um, and so uh, we're, we're simply trying to uh, do our job in presenting it faithfully and taking people back to the Bible. Um, 
I love our little bumper stickers or magnets that we have. There's, I don't know how many comments I've heard about those magnets. You know, back to the Bible. That's intriguing to people. Um, that, that's, and it's, it's intriguing because it's a unique concept uh, to a lot of people. Wow, you're just going back to the Bible? How, how, how interesting? Well, duh. What else would you do? Um, but uh, people have found all sorts of things to go back to. But we're going back to the Bible. And we're trying to get people into the Bible. And, uh, you know, they, we're not trying to create anything new or original when we go back to the Bible. Uh, we're just trying to present it in, 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 its, uh, in its fullness and, and truthfulness. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting. Uh, Dan mentioned where Peter talked about in 2 Peter chapter 1, stirring up your minds by way of remembrance. Peter taught some things that he had already taught him. Well, if he'd already taught them once, why did he teach it to them again? Um, you know, because it needs to be done. Uh, over in the book of Jeremiah, uh, God said, you know, demand and ask for and go back to the old paths. Well, that's what, there's nothing wrong with the old paths. Just, just because they're called old doesn't make them bad. Um, you know, sometimes we think about something being old. Oh, we, we, we need to come up with a better system. Uh, well, there, there's not one... Not one that exists. And so we're teaching, teaching the Bible, number three. Um, number three, as we, are, as we are teaching the Bible, we are trying to do a number of things. One is to build faith in God. You know, it's interesting. I'm trying to think how to say this and if I should even talk about it. The dynamic that we have in this congregation of, uh, of people that are in our Bible classes, with the exception of if you're teaching a junior high class, you should only have junior high kids in there, right? I mean, that's typical. Teaching senior high class, you should only have senior high in there. You might have, you know, some college kids that, you know, haven't advanced beyond that yet. Um, but you should have that. If you're in the young adult class, you know, you should mostly have young adults, except for those who are still hanging on, uh, you know, or, or wishful thinking. But uh, for, for the other adult class, the dynamic is so, is so diverse. You, 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 have a, you can have a class where you have a visitor who may have zero or very little knowledge about the Bible. Same class, you may have a new convert, just baptized, and they're trying, they're trying to learn the Bible books and how every, everything fits together. Same class, you're going, to have some, you're going to have some college student who's grown up in the church. They, they've got a foundation of truth, but they're still learning. Same class, you're going to have a deacon. Same class, you're going to have a deacon's wife. Same class, elders and elders' wife. Same class, you're going to have a Ruth Milton. Turns 90 years old next week. Two weeks. Some week. Sometime this month. Is it next week? Next week, right? I can't remember. 90 years old. Still in the class, building her faith in God. Still involved. And if you're in the auditorium class, making comments, asking questions. She does the same thing in the Tuesday morning Bible class that she attends faithfully. Here's somebody 90 years old. Does she need to build her faith? She is building her faith in God. She is having her love for the Word of God fed. And built. She, she is looking at the, at the fact that she wants to build her relationship with Christ. Why else would she continue to come as faithfully as she is? So here, here the, the dynamic and the diversity of, of the people in our classes, and yet it applies. It applies to every last one of us. First and foremost, it applies to the person doing the teaching. Wonderful thing about teaching is you're going to learn more than anybody else in the class. You're going to have your faith built more than anybody else. They, and, and you may think, boy, if they don't get anything out of this, at least I'm getting something. And, you know, that's, that's, that's sometimes the case. But as the teacher, it's great to teach. And that's not just talking. We're talking about in the classrooms right now. You want to grow your faith? Teach somebody one-on-one. -on -one. Start doing one-on-one -on -one Bible studies with non-Christians. When we talk about the teacher learns more than the students, that works in a classroom and it works one-on-one -on -one, and it'll build your faith in a hurry. 
But when we talk about our classes, we're, we're not, the attention is not to draw, it's not to draw attention to the teacher. Wow, look at how much he knows. Look, look at, look at his faith. Forget that. It doesn't matter. The teacher is not the focus. God's the focus. Love for the word is the focus. Uh, our relationship with Christ is the focus. And as the teacher, what we want is for people to leave the class with more of this than they had when they came in. That's our focus. But it's not us doing it. It's God's Word doing it. It is the Word of God uh, becoming applicable uh, to somebody's life, to their everyday life, realizing that it is God's Word. Paul says in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For what? It is the power of God. Not the, not the teacher. The teacher is not the power. The Word is the power. And, and, and if we open that up in our classes and have it as a part of our classes, it will change lives of those who are there, uh, whether it's Old Testament or New Testament. Those things that are written before time, they're written for our learning. And uh, here we have a book that gives us everything that we need for life and godliness. Uh, and so if, if we were to identify four principles, fundamental principles, four philosophies, of teaching upon Beach Lakes. These may be the same in other congregations, maybe a little bit different, but if we walk in a classroom at Palm Beach Lakes, what's expected of me? Whether I'm teaching first and second Timothy textually, or, or whether I'm teaching how we got the Bible, or whether I'm teaching uh, the essentiality of baptism, whatever I'm teaching, what's my job? Teach. Teach the Bible. Build people's faith in God and their relationship with Christ and their love for the Lord. And then make sure that when they walk out, it's not just all theory. That they've got something that applies to them and helps them to be a better Christian that week. Uh, what we're going to do over these next few weeks, uh, tonight was intentionally general and basic, uh, again, to try to get us all on the same page uh, as to what, what's, our, what's our expectation uh, in a general way when, when we teach. Uh, and next week, we'll build upon that and talk about being uh, effective as a teacher and what, what, uh, what can effective teachers do. Uh, and we'll spend a couple weeks talking about, you know, just, just what, what's involved in that. Uh, and then we are going to spend uh, a few weeks talking about some specific lesson types and how you develop a particular lesson of a particular type. And, uh, and there will be, as a part of this, um, there will be some assignments that are made. Uh, you will be asked to work. In other words, you will be asked to work on some things outside of class. If you want to call it homework, call it homework. If you want to call it an assignment, whatever. Uh, but you, and not this week, next week, but a few weeks after, you'll be asked to work on some things outside of class uh, as, as we try to develop uh, our, ourselves and, and our ability to teach. Uh, and so uh, I don't think that shouldn't scare you off. I hope it doesn't scare you off. It's not going to be huge. Uh, you're not going to ask to be come in here, to come in here and, uh, uh, and present all of that, but uh, just an opportunity for us to grow together. Uh, apparently, the second bell is rung. Uh, I didn't hear the bell, but I heard the commotion, uh, which is almost as loud, apparently. Uh, let, let's bow together and pray, and then, and then we'll be dismissed. Holy Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the awesome privilege that we have to be students of it, for the responsibility that you give to us to teach it. May we build ourselves up in the most holy faith. May we strengthen our own desire to be students of your word. May we, as we have opportunity, whether it be in private or in public, to teach those your word. May we be faithful to it. May we allow them to build their own trust and love for you. Thank you for each one who is here this night. May we grow as a part of this class. In Jesus' name.